Hi all and uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm Gary. Um, today we're going to be doing a little bit different. This is going to be a bit of a talking head. Um, a few other bits put in. We're going to be talking FreeBSD versus Linux. I know, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking this could go either way, right? And you're right, it could. Um, both OSs are very much on par with each other, to be honest. <clears throat> Bad throat. When it, we're talking Linux versus FreeBSD, and we're talking desktop scenario, I'm not really going to get into server applications today. This is literally just going to be apples to apples, desktop comparison, and, uh, and it's not even about seeing which one is best because it's, it's completely subjective. This is going to be, um, do they do the same thing? Do they run the same? Can you do the same things? They both run a desktop environment. Whichever one you want installed, that is fine. They both do exactly the same thing. They can both run a web browser. They can both look at um, emails. You know, it's, it's, they're the same thing. They are exactly the same thing. And you can do pretty much the same as you can on either. So you can do gaming, albeit in a limited fashion. If you want to see a, a gaming video that can you game on, in, on Linux, then check out uh, Linus Tech Tips. He did a fairly comprehensive one. And I know there'll be a lot of people saying, but it's not fair. They don't do this and that. <laughs> it is what it is. That's the state of gaming on, on Linux. Gaming on FreeBSD, you know, you can run most of the games in a, what do they call it these days, Linux Simulator. Great name, brilliant. But yeah, so you can you can do the same on both. It's it really is irrelevant these days. It really comes down to what you like, what the aesthetics are. There are a few advantages to running Linux as a desktop, which I've found um, make things slightly easier. I find it a lot easier to to mount NTFS volumes. Haven't tried riser if. Uh, REFS yet. I'm not even sure that FreeBSD or Linux can mount them. I'd have to test it. I'm sure they can somehow. Uh, but like I said, I haven't really tested it. it. It's worth testing. If you take a look at what I've got open here, I've got um, this is Linux Mint. Let's have a look. It plays videos fine. I won't play too much of people's videos. Um, let's do the crab dance, shall we? It seems to be uh, everybody's favorite. So it plays fine, you know. Can it play 4K? Can, that's great. <laughs> so I'm actually logged in as me. Um, as you can tell, I have some rather unique tastes when it comes to what I've been watching. And I, yeah, Beach Boys. Yeah, love Beach Boys. Great. Um, so that, yeah, so that's, um, ooh, that looks pretty choppy, actually. Due to a quirk with Hyper-V, um, there is no, no volume on this, I'm afraid. Which is a pity. Would have been nice to have tested that, but uh, there we go. So that's um, Linux Mint. So if we check out GhostBSD and do the crab dance again. Yeah, I'm on.
Oh, that's really choppy. Up to 1080, uh, 4K. Yeah, that's... Um, uh, that's interesting. Let's drop it back down to uh, 1080. Oh, choppiness. Um, they don't perform like this on, on bare metal. These are um, Hyper-V and uh, VMware guests, and it really doesn't run very well. So, yeah, that's web browsing on, on FreeBSD, on GhostBSD, and uh, Mint. Let's have a look what else we can do. Now it's worth just noting, actually, when I was doing this, that um, the VMware workstation player was trying to um, it was trying to present my uh, Go XLR to the VM, which is interesting. Be interested to see if that actually worked. If it did, that would be great for me because I'm, it might actually help me move away from Windows. I'd then lose my Adobe stuff, but you could always use something else. There are alternatives to Adobe. So let's have a look at this. So obviously we've got package still there. Yeah. I like this shell. What's this? Fish. It is fish. It was fish that I launched, yeah. I like it. It's quite nice. Pretty. Um, okay, so we, we've got package, so we can install, I don't know, let's try installing um, OBS Studio. Is it there? It is. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that was in the package and ports collection. That's interesting. That's impressive. Can I do that on on Mint? Is that on on Mint in there? I bet it is. It is. Look at that. Wow, that's impressive. That's really impressive. I'm really surprised at that. So what else is there? Um, what about... No, I didn't think so. That, that would have surprised me. Um, okay, so it's not in, the, in that one. I um, went ahead and uh, installed Caden Live on uh, GhostBSD and on Linux Mint. Interestingly, um, Linux Mint has version 19.12.3, which I find very strange. That's quite old. It's from 2020. And Ghost BSD has a version of and the mouse stops playing around. Look at that, twenty one twelve two. So much much more in advance of that, which is odd because normally what you find is that Linux gets software a lot quicker than most. Uh, that may just be a Linux Mint thing. They may not have updated their packages. I don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, I could edit video with that. It's probably quite a steep learning curve on that, I would imagine, going from Adobe. But it's a non-linear editor. What more can you say about it? It's, um, you know, use it or don't use it, whichever one you want. I, I, I don't know if I'd, I would move over to that. So obviously the other thing would be audio recording, which I could use. What could I use for that? Audacity. So let's see if that's there, which I'm sure it is. 
Audacity is available on almost anything. And obviously for thumbnails, I could do GIMP. Okay, so it's there on that one. Let's have a look on Ghost BSD. Um, hold on, let's come out of this. Quit. Goodbye. System tools. Oh, yeah. So system tools. Open up our. Package install Audacity must be there. Of course it is. Uh, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Are we doing on? All right. So that's open. Let's launch it. There we go. So what version have we got here? Two three three. Okay. And on Ghost BSD we have three one three. Wow. So again the. Uh, Ports and Packages collection outdoing the uh, package repository on, on Linux Mint. That's um, quite impressive, I think, given that um, you usually find that it's the other way around. Again, that may just be a Linux Mint thing for their stability. They're using older versions, um, but I do find that quite, quite interesting. Uh, yeah, so. I could do that. So what do you guys think? Uh, please leave comments down below. I would be very interested to know what your opinions are of these operating systems. Um, like I say, GhostBSD seems to be the choice for me. Packages seem to be a little bit more up to date. It's a little bit annoying that you've got no um, Google Chrome. I do rely on Google Chrome quite a bit. Leave comments below. Let me know what you think. I'd, I'd be very interested to see what you guys are running. So as, as my T-shirt says, um, I'm not arguing. There's no point. You know, you can use Linux. You can use FreeBSD. It is all down to your choice. I'm just explaining why I'm right. And I'm not. I'm not. So yeah, guys, comments down below. I'd be very, very interested to, to see what you guys think. Um, and uh, as always, you know, don't forget to give a, a thumbs up and, and, and subscribe and share the video everywhere. It's, so thank you for joining in. Um, thank you to everyone who is leaving comments. I love it. I love trying to answer them. But guys, yeah, thank you. Bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.